What's up, VC? I just got done doing some hacky sack after I skateboarded. What's up? Okay, today we're talking about the 80s. Albums from the 80s. Hence why I have a fucking jean jacket on right now, okay? This was, this is what, now people back like, oh, came out way before they, dude, the 80s, fucking, you would have your doobie, your ice chest on the fucking passenger seat when you're driving with your rubberman container, cruising Main Street, which they banned in our hometown. You probably can't hear what I'm saying because the music's too loud. I'm all hyped up right now off of coffee and life. Oh, I just breathe it in. All right. Now I can't do the whole episode with shades on, okay? But these are also big old fucking Ray-Bans. These were popular in the 80s. It's basically where the shit came from, okay? Molly Ringwald invented the shit. Okay, now I have to turn it down. My walk away. It's my fucking signature move. Here, we're gonna bring it down just a little bit. Fucking back, okay? Now, I see everybody talking about certain albums. And it's weird which albums are very pop, like popular. And like, if you're late to the party, Better late than never. It's happened to me many times. My dog's all hyped up right now. What's up? Cheers. Cheers. Who else has a Rush mug? And people are like, Ty, you've been talking about Rush a lot. Rush has always been in my life, but it was the first... Second... Okay, first concert. True story. Since we're on the 80s, the first concert I went to, Corey Hart. I wear my fucking sunglasses that night. That crazy song. That actually was pretty good. That album was actually pretty decent. My sisters loved Corey Hart, so my mom being how awesome she is, she would usually try to make our dreams become a reality when we were children, even though she was on a super budget. Somehow she managed to get tickets to Corey Hart, okay? I'm sure they weren't that much back in the day. The Santa Cruz Civic. Shrink down the story. So I've seen Corey Hart. About six years old. He's 86. On the way out of the show, all the guys there were look-alike wannabe Corey Hart's, obviously, because that's like what all the girls were wanting to fucking see, right? So... Basically, everywhere you looked, it was a bunch of, you know, women, like girls, you know, and then dudes that looked like Corey Hart, but they weren't actually Corey Hart. Well, my sister, Keisha, oh, <laughs> uh, it's all good. I, I guess I could say her name. Um, she, uh, my parents were hippies, okay? Um, they, uh. She thought she seen Corey Hart. Okay, I was like kind of debating my head. You know what I mean? It's all good. Um, so, uh, she, she, uh, thought she'd seen Corey Hart right as we're getting my mom's car. And at the time, my mom had this big old, like, it wasn't an old Cadillac, but it looked like an old Cadillac. This big old bow. I think it was like a, I want to say an old Mercury or some shit. Some used big old four door boat my mom got that she really liked. I don't know if she really liked it, but she liked it at the moment. My sister was like, oh my gosh, there's Corey Hart. Opens the back door of this huge boat, which so the door was huge, and just floored some chick, like knocked her the fuck down. So yeah, that was a highlight of the night for me, I think. But so, the, but the first real show I went to was Rush with my stepdad and my mom. And uh, it was the Presto Tour, and after one, uh, Mr. Big was the opening band for that one. I'm pretty sure... Roll the Bones was the year Primus was touring for their miscellaneous debris tour. So, that's why Rush. So now you've heard like a three minute introduction thinking, okay, are you going to talk about any of these albums from the 80s that are must have? Maybe. Maybe I'll just reshoot this whole video. Who knows? I'm, not, I'm just... This is just improv. You know what I mean? Free jazz. I kind of got... I don't have a headache, but it's like, like a sinus infection. I feel like just a little bit... Well, I, I was sick. Don't worry. I mean, I'm fucking... What the fucking scary thing that's out in the world right now? I had an actual... I was just normal sick. My, me and my poor bass player, one of my parents, he got really, really sick. And he got scared because he's vaccinated and everything, don't worry. Uh, so he thought, did he get did he get it? And no, he was fine. The, the, all the test, test came back negative, and now he feels a lot better. So, so I, I guess you can still get normal sick. So still fucking be careful, I guess. Watch your hands, don't touch your eyeballs. <laughs> Alright, albums. We're gonna get to them. We're gonna do it right now. Okay, first album. I can't, I'm not trying to go in chronological order or anything like that. I just kind of randomly pick some stuff. But we are gonna go in chronological order, I guess. Maybe. No, who knows? Next. Pretenders 2. Why am I picking this album up? This is the earliest 
my brain. The first melody I memorized as a little kid, I Go to Sleep by Pretenders. That was the first distinct thing I remember hearing. And I was very young at the time. Yes, so my mom, so I was like two or three years old. So was, I think you guys can go fucking way. But yeah, at three, I, this is like the first says a kid hearing music. All the other shit I didn't want to memorize, but I Go to Sleep had such a pretty melody to it. Very distinct. Almost great, like this melody that I'm hearing right now. Damn. I don't want to jump topics, but we're going to jump topics. This album has every fucking song you know, but you can't hate. All spiced together. So anyways, first melody I can really remember, but this whole album is fire. Um, a lot of people don't talk about Scott Honeymoon, I think is his name. This whole band's really good. You know what I mean? But sometimes I feel like sometimes he's... Honey Mix. Yeah, Scott... James Honeyman Scott. Anyways, I wish I should have had his name. Anyways, the dude's an amazing guitar player. I, I think he kind of. I, I, I think he passed away relatively young. But anyways, this album's fire. If you don't have any pretenders, and you see this, and back in the day, I think you still get this album for fairly cheap. Back in the day, this was like two fifty all day long. Two bucks, a buck eighty nine, three dollars, maybe five dollars if it was like mint, mint condition, like it was brand new. But that's. That's a whole other debate, or like another conversation for later. Okay. YouTube, October. This fucking album's killing. I saw October. I remember the first time I heard it. I figured it out again. Um, great album right here. Just look how young they are. Like what? 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 They had fucking sixth grade camp or some shit. They made this album. I'm serious here. And. YouTube, YouTube, their first, like, five, their first three albums are fire. Like, all this stuff is really good, but they, you know, they still have, even by, like, the late 80s, they were a lot different. By the, by the early 90s, they were a lot different than this early stuff. Still have the YouTube vibe, you know, but this album has tons of feels. Really good. Um, has a song Gloria on here, which you probably heard. My favorite song in here is October, even though it's a really short one. It's just a good album. This whole album is really good. I'm actually going to have to spin this day. I haven't heard it in a while. And yes, and then uh, I'm pretty sure this is their first album, actually. Boy. Get the. If you. I mean, again. $4.89. This is a mint condition back in the day. You're probably a little more pricey now. I could be wrong, though. But, um, has a song I Will Follow. Twilight's a really good song. This whole album's really good, also. Um, definitely one right a must have. Alright, we're gonna try, I wanna try to keep this under 15 minutes, so. Cole. Uh, what's the name of this album? I don't even know the name of this album, but it's one I got back in the day and it's fucking fire. It was, uh, Dreamtime. I thought it was fun. This whole album's really good. Electric. I, I have it. Someone once re recommended it, so you'll probably really like Electric. No, that was not my really didn't connect with. This album totally loved right off the back. Really good one. And this one's a little beat up, but the vinyl's really good shape. And again, 389. This is an import. I mean, fuck imports now. It says, uh, Beggar's Bark, Barkel. Beggar 57. I don't know. As the lyrics, I'm pretty sure. No lyrics, but it does have the original sleeve. And I'm kind of curious because Beggar's Banquet. Sorry, okay, that's not an R. Sorry, Beggar's Banquet. I have no idea. 
I've never heard of that. So anyways, but this is a great album. So however you get it, get it. The other cult out, the cult album is Love. Uh, Brother Wolf and Sister Moon. That was the first track I heard on. I, well, the first song I really tripped out on by the cult. This whole album's really good. Definitely worth getting. The cult's kind of funny. When I was a kid, I really didn't like them. I remember when they had their big hit on MTV. It was like, uh, like, uh, is this the guy from Creep Show 2 with the Indian hair? Like, what the fuck's going on here? Like, some, like, if Jim, like, but he snorted some Jim Morrison. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't vibing it. So. And I, I felt like sometimes people were like, oh, I love the cult. And like some of these people are just saying they love the cult because like their other friends love the cult. But musically, they really didn't like the cult. And if that happens, you're fine. But it's kind of like how some people are like, oh, I love the clash. You're like, oh my God, you just ruined the clash. Like, like anytime I've heard someone talk about how much they love the clash, they're the type of person I just don't want to have conversation with. And I'm not saying, I mean, don't ever dislike anybody. Just like throwing out too many paper airplanes. So, go with the cult. But later on, I ended up getting into them. Like, like, basically, it was this album first. I got this one first. I was like, wow, this is fire. I got the other one. And then these two are my favorite out of all. All right. You're going to laugh at me on this one, but Charlie Sexton. Fucking dude's badass right here. I think he's the local in Austin. I've seen him at like Antones and stuff like that. I didn't try to talk to him. It seems like he's always trying to get laid, so I'm not trying to be a cock blocker over here. But uh, uh, this album, I remember when I was a little kid, my sister's bumpy and my mom playing, and um, just a good album. I remember too, uh, my guitar had a maple neck. So I remember just as a little kid seeing he had a maple neck on his guitar too, maybe like have hope, maybe I might be able to learn a couple licks because we have a guitar with a similar neck, even though mine was a PBT-60. But yeah, uh, Beat So Lonely. This album, like, it's good. I want to put it like fire, but it's, a, it's an 80s album. If you want to hear a good 80s album and you see this one, scoop it up because you're going to, I got this for a buck fifty now, so like, his shit hasn't shut up to the roof, so. Unfortunately, unfortunately for the record store owners, but fortunately for buyers, it's still cheap as shit. Which means it's great. All right, we're gonna get into the last, the last three. Some serious fire here. Okay, I should just show my better version of this one. I mean, I'm gonna show it. We're gonna bring down the volume just a tad. I mean, we're gonna show it. I know, I can already feel like I'm getting judged from walking away. But I do have the original, what the fuck? Like the special version, all yellow. You gotta have, it's really weird, this album cover is like really short though. It's like, okay, maybe I'm tripping. I swear, it feels like it's smaller, okay? But this one is, one time they had it for sale for pretty cheap because it had a big old fucking tweak in the case. But it's the reissue on yellow vinyl. And I was like, oh god, I hate the color yellow. But I was like, it was for cheap. I have an original version. It's pretty beat up. I got it for eight bucks. But the vinyl's good. The case is just kind of beat up. And the record's a little beat up, but it's, it's like VG. But so, I love that album so much, I just had to get the original master recording. What's up? This is a must-have. I'm pretty sure this is the B-52's debut album. I could be wrong. Uh... Yeah, it's called the B-52s. So I think it's just their, it's a safe self-titled album. Super good. Still love this album. The first two are fire, but this one is, like, I, you know, probably one of the greatest albums to come out in the 80s. Oh, wait. Let me make sure it came out in the 80s. Well, oh! I had a feeling. Okay. Fuck you guys. This is actually 79. I was wrong. Um, But... This has the 80s vibe, okay? This is like... And let's just talk about it. We're gonna go extended here, fuck. Extended version. Fuck, this is director's cut. I was born in 1980. Okay, weird here, but uh... If you were born in the 80s, guaranteed your parents fucking... Uh... Yeah, we're fucking on the disco dance floor doing a bunch of blow, okay? Now you're like, no way, my parents didn't do it. No, they did, okay? It's... So basically, you are a product of a bunch of people being addicted to fucking some powder, uh, listening to horrible music, and they birthed the 80s. Hence, 
us. And what's really weird, if you're born 1981 of January, you are a millennial. What the fuck? I thought it was Generation X. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure about this. So I'm actually, I was born 1980, but I'm closer to the millennial than I am. Because 79, I guess like 79 was a cutoff for the X. Anyways, something to ponder on that you are basically a product for just hardcore partying and dancing to horrible music. Don't be sad. You got here. However you got into the portal, it's fine. I mean, I always looked at it like it's kind of crazy. I mean, not to get too scientific here, but when you were swimming around in your dad's ball sack, like, you, like, I'm pretty sure I wasn't first in line. I think the, the one that was meant to be was going to be like the next Einstein. Fuck him. Right? Right? But I, I was a better swimmer, even though this little scientist has a sperm whale. So I, thought I shoulder bumped the next Einstein, who was going to save the world from being divided. And uh, I fucking, and like even God had no control. Was like, oh, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Couldn't shake my dad's ball sack to get the sperm in front of me. So, I, and I ended up here. I mean, I feel bad that I basically fucking killed the next uh, Einstein Hawking. But whatever. My point is you're here, and if she somehow got to 16 minutes and 23 seconds of this video, I apologize. This is weirdness. And this is how it goes. I'm like, I've always, I love conversation. I want to hear. Bring this shit back, okay? As much as I ramble on, my ears open up as big to listen for the other weirdness. Good weirdness. Purified truth. All right. You're like, what did they put in your fucking coffee this morning? Life. It's called life. You know what they say, it's a 1 in 4 trillion chance. You can win the lottery, what, 21 times, 22 times? 1 in 4 trillion chance to be on this planet. So it's always perspective. Already you've won the lottery over 20 times. It's fucking crazy. Most people don't even win like a small lottery, like 5 bucks off a lotto ticket. Because you usually don't, you know, there's usually people who are totally broke that waste a shit ton of money on lottery tickets that never win. And once in a while... That poor motherfucker wins, and then he buys like 20 airplanes and his brother a restaurant, and then his brother tries to have him killed because he wasn't satisfied that his brother who won millions gave him a million dollars in cash and bought him a restaurant. This is a true story I heard on the water winners. So, the whole thing I'm going with this is back to the 80s. You were a product of the 80s. So, we've got a few albums left, two albums left. We're going hardcore here. Shot A. I didn't want to go with the first one, I had to go with the second. The, the first three are all fire, but... Gosh, if I had to pick one. The reason I'm picking this one... I have the song Jezebel in here, which is like... Oh, fucking one of my favorite... Uh, Sally and Jezebel. Two favorite songs by Sade. But, don't worry, I got the box set. I have a couple copies of this version. I think I might have three copies. No, I think two, co two copies of this version. Well, three copies all together, including the one in the box set. It's just a great album. The original one... I feel like it sounds better and uh, Michael from 45 RPM audio file was the kind of first one I heard pointed out that the, the box set one sounds almost more of like a demo mix <laughs> and I I feel like a lot of the reissues have that demo mix vibe to them and I don't know why that reason is I was listening to the rush permanent waves and the remastered version I feel like has a little bit of that demo mix vibe to it What's not on all the songs. Certain songs sound really good. I'm hold, talk, holding tongue to, about Rush when I'm holding a shot A rap album, but it's gonna go full circle here. Uh, but so some of the songs sounded better than the other album, than uh, the original pressing of the Rush. So I'm gonna have to do a whole episode just talking about that. Back to shot A. This is a great album. If you see this one, soup it up. You can still get this one for fairly cheap, like ten, eight bucks. Up, you know. Maybe if it's in really good condition, 15. That would be about to stop about there. All right, the grand finale. I've been seeing a few people going off about this and stoked to get it and talking about it's the Holy Grail. And like, I'm like, like, duh. And I hate to use duh like I'm, I'm in Clueless. You know, it's not a bad movie. Mm -hmm. um, I had a neighbor. She, she, she said it way too much, so I just kind of fucking suck in. She was a neighbor who, like, um, she would come home from school. She was, like, two years older than me. She would be singing Mariah Carey. Like, she was going to audition for fucking Mariah Carey's 
like if she, if Mariah Carey overdosed in a bathtub while fucking eating cookies, um, she was gonna go for the audition and just nail it. So I remember I just had my head like watching her murder these Mariah Carey songs. Mariah, Mariah, say Mariah Carey, Mariah Carey. She would sing these songs like crazy. So that's where the word uh, just got embraced into my fucking brain. I blame, I blame Sarah. What was that horrible song, Sarah? That was like a black and white video that gave me nightmares when I was a kid. Sarah, oh Sarah, was what was that? There was some like what she's riding away on a bike. Like what happened? What happened inside that farmhouse? Like, did she like like you know she was tired of making dinner? You know what I mean? Like, it was you know what I mean? He was adopted even though it was her brother she married, but on the farm. Like, one of the, the first kid went off to college, but the second kid was supposed to help out with the farm, you know what I mean? But that kid went off, and on the way to the airport, bags got switched up and got a bunch of cocaine in one bag, and got chased by these fucking crazy street lords in L.A. Luckily, this blonde chick we met on the airplane helped him out, and he fucking was good at throwing knives. Full fucking crazy, but back to Sarah on the ranch. She was like... Just tired of it. You know what I mean? Fucking, they're on a budget now. Fucking, you know, Brian didn't stick around to help the fucking dad out on the farm. So she was tired of making macaroni and cheese and fucking hot dogs. And she finally hopped on that fucking bicycle and rode off. Hence the song, Sarah. And, you know, I mean, that was like, I was a little frustrated as a kid. Like, why didn't they tell more of a backstory in that song? Like, what was going on inside that farmhouse? So, what's the grand finale? This album. I see people like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, fucking, fucking The Cure, oh, the greatest hits album, like fucking uh, the singles or whatever. Basically, the greatest hits, right? Like, right? Right? I mean, I, I, my stepdaddy played the shit out of this album when I was a kid. I remember my mom would be making brunch, like eggs with like onions and bell peppers and stuff, the kind of shit you didn't like when you were a kid, but now you'd love. And it's the houseboat would smell good. You know what I mean? I like the smell of that. And uh, my stepdad. But at the time, this was all, I'm pretty sure he had this on vinyl, but he, this one's CDs were all fucking just overdid vinyl. He put this on, 10.30 a.m., crank up Killing It Air. Now, calm down, that's the name of the song, I'm trying to be all weird here. Um, that opening track, though, I remember when I was a kid, it got me. It's a great song. This whole album's really good. Uh, and back in the day, I found this in New Arrivals at Recycled Records in Mon Monterey, California, six bucks. Okay, this fucking version. It was in mint condition. It is a uh, Electra label, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think. Either way. Yeah. Gosh, such good condition. It's like fucking still silvery, shiny. Well, I don't know, silvery, just shiny, really. Sleek and shiny. See the edges on this one. You know, I think I just noticed the edges more to where some of the old ones from back in the day are really, like, great. Look at them. I'll give it 7.8. Um, so, anyways, this is the last one. These are albums from the 80s. You heard these ramble-ons. And, yeah, I just free flow here. I'm just fucking talking here. I don't have anyone around me. You know what I mean? I'm just, just isolated. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Um. I guess I just want to end on a positive note here. Um, play lots of vinyl. Stay positive. Don't buy too much vinyl. This is my new advice I'm starting to give you now. Play lots of vinyl. Don't buy lots of vinyl. Well, how is that impossible? That's like, what? No. Just calm it down. Soak in every record you buy. Really give it the attention it deserves. Like, fucking... Like... Like, I just got to... I, I just got this rush box... Um, little box set thing. I fucking, I think I listened to Rush to I wanted to puke yesterday. You know what I mean? But I just fucking wanted to. Just, I was just listening to mixes. I was just laying on my bed, zoning out. You know what I mean? Just, like, you should do that with every album, okay? Like, this, this Dennis Coffee fan album. I need, I've only listened to it a couple times. I need to really give this more attention. I mean, I didn't, just, you know what I mean? This album was big bucks here. This album I paid like three bucks for. Like, four bucks. But it deserves tons of attention. I mean, you need to give it the attention it deserves. Because I feel like sometimes 
I literally commented on someone's post about a record asking, hey, how does the album sound? And they're like, oh, I have the whole set. I'm like, well, no shit, Sherlock, but how does it sound? You know what I mean? And sorry, Rob, that wasn't you who made that remark. But then this person replied, great. So I, so I'm, I just I hope these people are listening to the albums as much because dude, I've seen people in the record store count their money. Like I, I've seen this one dude like literally tell his kid, like, you, you're mom, we're not having dinner, you know? Um, fuck you, I need to get this life slayer. And I was like, and the kid was looking at me like, what's up, do you have a dollar for cheeseburger? And I'm like, yeah, but I can't hook you up, your dad's a fucking loser, but that Slayer album is fire! Here's an extra book for the record. But anyways, the point, I'm, I lost it. I lost it, I had a big point here where I was going. My point is, guys, stay positive. Don't overspend on the vinyl was the point I was going here, okay? And uh, enjoy the vinyl. Give it the attention. Because that dude definitely went home and played that Slayer. And, like, you know what I mean? Even though, the, I think they had some top ramen. And you know what the little kid, I think, is going to go on from living in that house where they're eating Hamburger Helper a lot and is going to be the next Bezos because of the struggle. You know what I mean? So, anyways, enjoy the vinyl. Stay positive. I'll see you guys next time. Late 80s out.